Hi, in this beginner friendly tutorial I will show you how to create this Toon Shaded 3D Rocket in Blender. This model is software agnostic, it can be dragged and dropped into a game engine or other 3D software and it should look the same without any extra work. To demonstrate I've imported this rocket into the Godot game engine and made a small game with it. It works perfectly without any problems. It will also work perfectly in Unity and Unreal Engine. The focus of this video will be on how to create a clean outline for our Toon Shaded 3D models. If you've ever tried to make a Toon outline before, you've likely found and followed an online guide on making a solidify outline in Blender. And you were hoping for this result, but you got this result instead. And you were wondering, what did I do wrong, did I miss a step? I'm here to tell you yes, you've indeed missed a step. You've actually missed many steps. The main problem you have is that you haven't modeled your mesh with Toon Outline in mind. You model the way you always model, and after you were done, you try to force an outline on a mesh that wasn't made with outline in mind. And sure enough, there are glitchy looking artifacts all over the place. Today we'll change that. I'll show you how to outline your model the correct way, and the result will look clean without any glitchy artifacts. If you find this video useful, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would help me make videos on my channel full time and turn it into a resource for Toon Shade. 3D game art. If you're following along, feel free to screenshot this reference image and import it into Blender. I picked an easy model for this exercise since I think you guys will have easy time making this rocket. Make the body first by creating a cube, subdividing it and modeling it like in the footage. Now let's learn how to create the Toon outline. I will show you two methods, the destructive method and the non-destructive method with the solidify modifier. To view our outline, make sure you are in material preview mode. For the destructive method do the following. Duplicate your mesh, make it slightly bigger, flip the normals on it and give it a black material with backface calling checkbox enabled. The benefit of this method is that the tune outline is just some 3D mesh with flipped normals. That means that you can edit it with every single feature available to you in the Blender software, just like you edit any other 3D geometry. You have full control over the outline. Now for the procedural non-destructive method using the solidify modifier. Give your 3D mesh two materials. The first material will be for the mesh, the second one for the outline. Name them accordingly. The second material, the one for the outline, should be black and have backface culling checkbox enabled. Add your solidify modifier now. Twirl open normals and materials categories. And for the checkboxes enable even thickness, disable rim fill, enable normals flip. Set the material offset to 1. Material offset of 1 selects our second material since programmers like to count from 0. Material offset of 0 is the first material and material offset of 1 is the second one, our tune outline material. Give your solidify outline some thickness. Now I want to teach you a secret workflow that you haven't seen on any other YouTube channel. It uses vertex groups to stylize the outline. Let's select our 3D model and go into the data tab. In there we will find something called vertex group. A vertex group is a way for us to tell Blender to remember a selection of vertices. And when Blender remembers a selection of vertices like this, we can then tell a modifier like our solidify modifier to affect only those vertices. Let's create a vertex group and name it all verts, since we wish to assign all the verts to it. To assign them, we first need to select them so that Blender knows which verts we wish to assign. In the edit mode, I've selected all the verts. We now have these four buttons. One of them says assign. Before we click on it, notice this blue bar called weight. It's set to one. The weight of one tells Blender that these verts will be assigned to the vertex group 100%. A lower weight means that the words will be assigned to the group with less influence. Just for fun, let's assign all the words to the vertex group with a weight of zero. Click assign. Now let's tell our solidify modifier to use our custom vertex group. When we do that, our outline disappears, as we expected. Let's go back to the data tab and assign the words with a weight of one. Our outline is now back online. Now let's select the bottom most words and let's set the weight to zero and press assign. And a loop above that, let's set the weight to 0.7 and 
hit a sign. Our outline is now stylized. To see our weights visually, we can go into the weight paint mode. There we see our weights represented with these colors. We can even paint the weights with a brush instead of setting them manually. I think I will use this gradient tool to stylize my outline even more. And that's how to use the non-destructive method for the tune outline. It's worth saying that both of these methods get the job done and it's a matter of personal preference which one you pick for which task. I mostly use the destructive workflow, but if you prefer the solidify approach, feel free to use it. Oh and by the way, if you like my secret solidify technique with vertex groups, give my video a like and subscribe. My mission is to turn this channel into a resource for toon shaded 3D game art. Let's go back to our rocket body and outline it. Feel free to use one of the techniques we talked about. I picked the destructive workflow to make my outline. In the footage you see me use a free add-on called Easy HDRI to make my world white. It's going to help with recording this video. Don't worry about that add-on for now. At the end of the video I'll give you a list of free add-ons I recommend for toon shading. Now let's make the next part of the rocket. Let's call it the exhaust mount. Start by subdividing a cube and modeling it into a form that you see in the video. I likely don't need to walk you through it step by step since this rocket is beginner friendly. Now make sure that this exhaust mount sits flush against the outline of the rocket body. Let's outline it. Again I'm doing it by hand but you can do it with the solidify modifier if you like. Let's make the exhaust. We can make it with the same box modeling technique that we've been using so far. Make a subdivided cube and go from there. Make sure that the mesh doesn't penetrate the outline. Extrude a hole into the exhaust. Here I'm using the bevel modifier and tweaking its angle value. But feel free to make this exhaust your way. The main lesson of this video is how to make a clean outline. The modeling part is just so we have something to work with. Let's outline this part. It's slightly more challenging to outline but I'm confident you will be able to do it. And for the extra challenge I would like you to be really OCD about it. View the outline from every angle and make sure there are no glitchy artifacts. The outline needs to look immaculate from every angle. Let's work on the wing of the rocket now. Use the mirror modifier to reflect it on the other side and make sure you're mirroring both X and Y axes. Create one of those empty objects. I chose the plain axis empty object. Next, on the mirror modifier, use that empty you just made as the mirror object. Now rotate the empty 45 degrees on the Z axis. I also added a subdivision modifier and got to work aligning my wings to the reference image. Once you're done, feel free to apply your subd modifier. Before we continue, I first want to teach you a very important technique for my style of toon shaded art. The technique is all about shrink wrapping the bottommost loop of vertices to some surface. Surface, which in my case is almost always the outline of another object. We're going to use the vertex groups again, but this time we're going to create a vertex group only for the bottommost words. Then we're going to tell the shrink wrap modifier to shrink wrap exclusively those bottommost words onto a surface. Let me demonstrate. I have these two objects and I want one to sit flush against the outline of another object. I'm going to select the bottommost words and create a vertex group. I'll assign the words to the group and give my object a shrink wrap modifier. I'll set that other object as the target and then tell shrink wrap to use my vertex group. Then I'll apply the modifier and do some final obsessive compulsive adjustments to make sure that my outline looks clean. Now we'll go back to our rocket and do the same thing to the wings. Let's use this trick to shrink wrap the wing of the rocket to the outline. Apply the shrink wrap and do the obsessive compulsive tweaks until the outline looks clean. Let's outline the wing. You know me, I always like to do it by hand. After you're done, you hopefully have something that looks more or less like this. Remember, in this exercise we're focusing on making a clean outline, so make sure you don't have any glitchy artifacts. And how you model this rocket is up to you, feel free to give it your own twist. It's time for UV unwrapping. UV unwrapping is easy and in this video I'm assuming you guys know the basics. All you really do is select edges where you want your UV seam to be, then you right click and choose mark seam, then press U and choose unwrap. 
In the footage you will see me use a little trick for straightening a UV island. A straight UV island makes it easy to draw a texture on it. Start by straightening just one polygon. Select its vertices and hit S to scale it, then constrain the scaling on either X axis for vertical alignment or Y axis for horizontal alignment. Once your polygon has been straightened, select it so it becomes the active quad. Then select the whole UV island, right click on it and choose follow active quad. It's worth mentioning that one of my recommended free add-ons can do this with just one click. Like I said earlier, I will suggest a list of free add-ons once we're done with this rocket. After we're done unwrapping our islands, it's time to pack them. Something that we should do is select all islands and use average island scale feature. This makes it so that all islands have the same number of pixels per measure of length. If we think in meters, then all islands have the same number of pixels per meter. If in inches, then pixels per inch. This measurement is called pixel density. But people in 3D industry like to call it texel density, since it's relevant only for the texture of our 3D art. So average island scale makes it so that all of our UV islands have the same texel density. Now try to pack your UV islands similar to the way I've done it. You can also do it your way if you wish. Now let's add the UVs of the outline to our UV island layout. You can see that I don't bother unwrapping the UVs for the outline. I keep them the way they are and overlapped. I even lower their texel density by making them all tiny and I put them somewhere in the corner. The reason for this is that they will have flat black color. So it doesn't really matter if the islands are small and overlapped. A blurry flat color is still that same flat color. Then let's export our UV layout as a PNG image. What I mean by that is, instead of creating a screenshot of our UV unwrap and importing that screenshot into our drawing software, Blender has a nice feature that exports a PNG image of our UV island layout. Once you export that, drag and drop it into your drawing software. Now let's make a simple texture. I'm using Adobe Illustrator, but I'm assuming you guys will instead use your favorite drawing app. As you can see, this texture is really simple and the techniques I'm using are also simple. Everything here can be done with mouse and keyboard. You don't need any fancy equipment. Also, any drawing software will work. Photoshop, GIMP, Krita, Inkscape, Affinity Photo and Designer. You name it, it's all going to work. Even texturing tools inside of Blender are going to do just fine. You see that I started things off by blocking in the main colors and doing some shading. Whenever I can, I try to stylize my shading to give it a bit more appeal. Probably the most complex part of this texture is the strip. Now you see why we decided to straighten this UV island. It's so much easier to draw on it. And that's it, our rocket is done. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and learned something. Now let me show you some free add-ons that you guys pretty much have to download. I'm using Blender 3.6 because some of the add-ons are not yet compatible with new versions of Blender and I need the add-ons more than the new official features. Auto reload. Let's start things with an add-on that creates a live link between in Blender and any other external drawing app. When you bring in an external image into Blender and use it as a texture, Blender pretty much never reloads that texture by itself. There is a feature for that, it's image reload textures. The shortcut is Alt plus R. Well, this add-on pretty much spams that as often as you want. This is useful because when you're texturing your art in an external app, as soon as you export the texture, it gets updated in Blender. I'm using an action in Illustrator that exports the art to a folder. As soon as I press the shortcut for the export, the texture gets updated in Blender. And yes, this add-on will work with pretty much every drawing app on the planet Earth, since all it's really doing in Blender is spamming Alt plus R so that you don't have to. I hope you guys realize just how cool Auto Reload is. It's a game changer for texturing in Blender. Like my video if you agree. X-ray selection tools. This is a selection tool that automatically toggles X-ray shading when you start drawing a selection box. So it lets you select through the object. Easy HDRI. You guys have seen this add-on. I use it pretty much to easily turn my world white. I work with black outlines, so a white world lets me see what I'm doing. Text tools. 
a fantastic add-on for UV unwrapping. You can align vertices, rectify your UV islands, rotate them and much more. It's all intuitive and easy to use. Outline helper. This add-on lets you make solidify outline with one click, instead of going through all the steps of creating it yourself. You can also quickly update it and remove it. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you in some way and I hope I see you around.